Real soon, Nintendo is releasing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Since I really love everything Mario Kart related, I figured out it could be pretty cool to do a little retrospective of this iconic game series. Welcome back to the Mario Kart Retrospective. In early 2010, the Nintendo team began development on the next installment of the Mario Kart franchise, but it wasn't until E3 of 2010 that the game would be revealed to the public under the tentative title of Mario Kart 3DS. It was shown a year later at E3 of 2011, and it was revealed it was gonna be called Mario Kart 7. The game was co-developed by Nintendo and Retro Studios, the company that made the Metroid Prime series and the Donkey Kong Country games for Wii and Wii U. The game introduced two new mechanics that were never seen in any Mario Kart game before. Hand gliding and underwater driving allows players to glide in the air and explore areas underwater, which slightly changes the way your kart will control and also drift. Mario Kart 7 includes 17 characters, with 5 being completely new to the series. Returning drivers include Mario, Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, Bowser, Donkey Kong, Toad, Koopa Troopa, Daisy, Wario, Rosalina, and your me. And the new drivers include Metal Mario, Shy Guy, which is now a full-fledged character instead of being a limited character like in Mario Kart DS. There's also the Honey Queen from Mario Galaxy, Wiggler, and Lucky 2, which can now be a driver for the first time ever, because, you know, we usually see the guy holding the start and end flag, but now he can drive, so that's pretty cool. Mario Kart 7 also introduced a new way of choosing your kart. Usually, you choose a kart and play with it, but this time you have to customize your vehicle, choosing the body, the tires, and the glider. This grants a total of 1,190 different card combinations. Your vehicle has 5 different stats that change depending on your choices, being speed, acceleration, weight, handling, and off-road capabilities. There is a total of 17 card bodies, 10 tires, and 7 gliders to choose from, so you can really customize your card the way you want. I'm an old school Mario Kart fan, so I like to go with the pipe frame buddy, as it reminds me a lot of Mario Kart 64. Once again, 16 new tracks are available and 16 retro tracks make a comeback. The Mushroom Cup will make you race on Toad Circuit, Daisy Hills, Cheap Cheap Lagoon, and Shy Guy Bazaar. The Flower Cup will bring you to Woohoo Loop, Mario Circuit, Music Park, and Rock Rock Mountain. In the Star Cup, you will go to Piranha Plant Slide, Wario Shipyard, Neo Bowser City, and Maka Woohoo. The Special Cup is home of DK Jungle, Rosalina's Ice World, Bowser's Castle, and obviously Rainbow Roll. Yup, it's back, it will always be back. For the Retro Tracks, we start with the Shell Cup, with N64 Luigi Raceway, Game Boy Advance Bowser Castle 1, Wii's Mushroom Gorge, and finally DS's Luigi's Mansion. For the Banana Cup, you'll explore N64 Koopa Beach, SNES Mario Circuit 2, Wii Coconut Mall, and DS's Waluigi Pinball. The Leaf Cup is home of N64's Calimary Dessert, DS DK Pass, GameCube Daisy Cruiser, and Wii's Maple Treeway. Finally, the Lightning Cup will bring you to Wii's Koopa Cape, GameCube's Dino Dino Jungle, DS's Airship Fortress, and SNES Rainbow Road. What? Two Rainbow Road tracks in the same Mario Kart game? Now that's amazing! 
The item selection includes the now classic bananas, green, red and blue shells, the babam, the mushroom, the super mushroom, the bullet bill, the blooper, the lightning and the star, but also introduces three new items, being the fire flower, which allow any character to throw fireballs that bounce on walls. There's also the super leaf, which gives the player a tail that can be used to attack opponents or to deflect incoming projectiles. Then we have the Lucky 7, which gives 7 items that rotate around the player's cart, allowing you to have one of the biggest arsenal of items all at once. The Boo and the fake item boxes power-ups have been cut from this game and they're nowhere to be found. The game also includes coins that you can pick up on the tracks by rolling on them. You receive a small boost every time you collect a coin and your top speed increases as you collect more. You can collect a total of 10 coins at once and getting hit by shells, falling down pits, sliding on banana peels and other hazards will remove some of your hard earned coins, so you want to be careful with that. Grand Prix is back, allowing you to race on 50, 100 and 150 cc, as well as the mirror class which mirrors all tracks once again. You'll get rated on your performance and getting a 3 stars rating is what you strive to achieve. Time Trials allows you to play against ghosts that you can share online with friends. In Versus mode, you can play on any tracks at any time and just like in Mario Kart DS, players without a cartridge can play as long as one of them has the game. People that don't have the game won't be able to customize their cart and will be forced to play as a shy guy. The battle mode is pretty much the same as Mario Kart Wii, featuring balloon battle as well as coin runners, where you want to get the most coins at the end of a set time. The versus and battle mode can be played online using the Nintendo 3DS online capabilities. You are ranked online using VR points. You start with a thousand VR and you can win some or lose some depending on your performances in races and battles. The game was met with positive reviews from critics and players alike. Metacritic awards it a score of 85, which is pretty good for a 7th game in a franchise. The game sold about 9.6 million copies worldwide, making it the 2nd best selling game for the Nintendo 3DS. Can you believe it? We're almost done with this retrospective, with next week being the first Mario Kart game to be visible in HD on a home console. So join me as we'll take a look at Mario Kart 8 and we'll see what it has in store for us. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you soon guys!